recording? Cool. How's the framing? Is it good? Framing is perfect. Cool. Hey guys, today we're gonna to be installing the Recluse Core Manual on our Project 500 KTM. The point behind doing this is I am on a mission to find the lightest possible clutch lever pull that will still give me the performance characteristics I want out of a traditional clutch operation setup. Therefore, what I'm talking about is I want a traditional clutch pull in that um, I'm not trying to go with the Recluse Auto Clutch or anything like that. Um, I want to be able to dump the clutch to do obstacles and, and trick maneuvers and things like that. Um, but it's a big bike and I also need to make sure that I don't just go like really light springs or something where the clutch plates are going to be slipping too much and I'll burn the clutch plate out with, with too much friction. So I've already got the Clever Lever on there. There's a video we'll link to here with my first impressions of the Clever Lever by itself on the stock clutch. Now I'm going to be installing the Recluse. Um, the point behind going with the Recluse is that because there's twice as many friction plates, you can get away with a little bit less clutch spring pressure because you've effectively doubled the surface area of the friction surface of the engaging clutch. What I've noticed is different about this clutch from the one I ran in the beta where I had some experience previously and, and we've got a video link to my process there. The new KTMs actually don't use your traditional clutch springs that most of you are, are going to be used to where there's, I don't know, I think six springs, right? Um, but there's a, a washer with some flex to it that actually presses down on the clutch stack. Um, I think it's called a Bellevue washer or something like that, Bellevue spring. So that's a new setup. Up. There's also a secondary inner hub that's separate from the um, from like the the um, basket part, which I think will be new. We'll get into all of that as we get into installing it. But um, well, let's take a look at some of these parts. I always think that recluse clutches are cool just because the way they look. Um, it's kind of badass, honestly. I mean, the whole spider logo, right? Um, I love that they come with a cover. I'm not sure if they need it. I don't think there's that much extra oil volume in this. Anyway, there wasn't on the beta, but. Um, We'll get into that. Um, it comes with a new breakaway washer for the inner basket. These are the new spring screws, which are quite different from what you might be used to with, like I said, with the traditional sort of stack springs. Um, and they come with a driver bit, which is kind of cool. So we'll see how that works out. Um, and then let's get into the real part that we all care about, which is the clutch stack itself. So this is what I was talking about. So. I'm actually not real familiar with how all this fits together. Um, I've done a ton of clutch work, but all on traditional clutches with traditional springs. Um, so they've got a, a pressure plate. Okay, so far fairly standard. Um, and then they've got this inner hub, also fairly standard. But what's unique on this setup, and I, I think it's KTM and not Recluse that designed all this, um, you know, they're just making it work here, but there's this secondary inner hub, and I'm not sure sort of how that all sits in the bike um, or how that functions, so we'll, we'll dive into that in a minute. I did look through the instructions. Um, I, I think it makes sense. The stack still goes in the traditional order and things like that. Um, anyway, and then, of course, you've got the... Um, the whole bunch of friction and um, steel plates that come with these. There's more of these, of course, than in the standard setup. So I'm counting nine friction plates. Um, I'm not sure how many is in the stock stack, but I want to say seven, probably something like that. Six or seven. It might actually be less in these KTMs. Uh, I'm not sure. Another thing that you'll... So the spring setup is different. We're going to show you how to handle that. I'm going to figure that out with you. as We'll, we'll go through that journey together. But another thing that I've already noticed, um, looking through the, the instructions that come with the Recluse kit, and this is, this is not unique to Recluse. They have these on a bunch of different um, clutch stacks, especially in street bikes with like a jitter, a jitter plate, things like that, um, that I've, I've used before. But not all of these are created equal. So some of these I think are, they're labeled as 65. I don't know if that's a measurement or just a, a, like a part number. And one is labeled as 63. One of these plates is actually different. That's, just, that's gonna go on the inside of the stack, I think. Um, but again, we'll get into that as we start to install. But the other thing that's unique to these is you can see they're kind of they're wonky. And there's actually directionality to them so that you can feather the clutch the right way according to the instructions. So, so these these will have to be installed like in a certain order. Like if you flip it over, you can see that the, the um, cut edge goes the opposite direction, right? And so that directionality is actually gonna matter with this clutch stack. So um, let's drag the bike in here, get this table out of the way. Now get the bike in here, we will tear it open. And it's time for an oil change anyway. So it'll be a good opportunity to drain the oil out of it, you, which you normally wouldn't necessarily have to do. You can lay the bike over on its side and do a clutch job without having to drain the oil. But I am draining the oil because you gotta change it 
fairly often in this bike and, and it's time. So, you know what? I almost forgot. Before I let you guys um, get into how to actually do this, I wanted to really quickly pitch the helmet chin mounts that we make. These are for action cameras like GoPro. They're custom fit to the chin guard area of the helmet. Chin mounting provides you the best possible point of view, we think, for filming for Instagram and YouTube, filming your, your action footage, whether you're mountain biking, snowmobiling, this time of year, that, that's something that people actually do, or enduro riding, motocross, whatever the you know adventure riding. We've got a bunch of different helmets. There's about 60 up in our shop. Link in the description down below with tons and tons of details. Check those out, guys. All right, let's get the bike in here and show you how to install this clutch. All right, first things first, I'm gonna pull the skid plate off, which I usually do for the oil change anyway. Um, like I said, I'm gonna change the oil. I also just noticed that my, my brake lever perch thing here is loose, so quick, comment, I guess, to always check your shit because you never know what's falling off. That's fine, I bang it around quite a bit. Um, it's real smashed up in the outside here and it's missing some of the pegs, but whatever, tighten that down. Um, and I'm gonna pull the skid plate off, drain the oil, pull the Acherby's engine covers, which by the way are a fantastic product. Definitely recommend running those, they don't cost that much. Um, and then we're gonna pull the cover and we're gonna see what's underneath. Um, it's the first time I've looked at a clutch that doesn't have the six springs, it's got that Bellevue washer, so that'll be interesting. And we'll see if we can figure this one out. Let's dive in. So the Acherby's engine cover covers more, I hope, than the clutch cover that I've got to pull off. But fortunately, it's only got three mounting screws. So of all these screws that hold the engine casing on, only three of them actually hold the Acherby's cover, which is really nice because that makes it pretty easy to remove. Oh, you know what? Make that four, <laughs> one that I forgot to do when I installed it. Ah, uh, that's clever. I will have to remove the brake lever spring because that attaches to the clutch cover, but then this clutch cover comes off with just, what is it, six or seven bolts. Um, I don't need to remove the entire engine casing cover, which requires a gasket. If you do have to pull that, you'd also be into the water system, so you'd have to drain the, the coolant as well. Um, but we've already got the oil out, so we're just gonna pull the clutch cover itself. Actually, this, clever, this clutch cover is getting replaced too by the recluse piece, so this whole thing will come off right now. Save your filler cap because you're gonna um, put that on the new recluse cover. Anytime you're doing clutch work, I've said this in other videos, but grab yourself a cordless drill and um, a wrench attachment. It's so much faster going through all the bolts. You don't want to jam in and like torque them down or anything, but it's easy to break them loose and spin them all out using a drill. Highly recommend it. This is what I think is that Bellevue washer. This is actually the clutch spring, and this is a retaining plate. And somewhere between how you turn these where and where you put the screws in, controls how much pressure you get on the clutch stack, effectively how much spring tension you get, right? And um, the way you optimize for that and the way you minimize lever pull is by measuring the stack that you're gonna install. And then Recluse has a guide that based on your stack height, they'll have you change the pressure of the, of the um, spring plate to compensate to get you like the lightest possible lever pull without sacrificing um, clutch drag. Uh, or clutch performance. You want to take these off in a pattern because you're releasing tension on the spring. You don't want it to be too crooked. Right up until pressure is released. See, and now I'm just going to spin them out. So this is that retaining ring and you can see that it's numbered. One, two, three. Those numbers control the pressure. It's just stepped on the back. I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but basically one, two, and three are just steps up. So it looks like three is the highest. Yep, and it's, it's just a ramp. So this is um, how you install this, which way you orient it controls which step you're on on the back, and that effectively changes your spring pressure. The actual pressing pressure it's basically spring preload is what it is because the pressure from this bellevue spring is always going to be the same that's constant because nothing changes about this what changes is the preload that you apply by changing the step that you sit on okay now we're going to start pulling the clutch stack apart um i think i understand the spring so off with the pressure plate try not to lose anything here there's a throw out 
bearing, which you're gonna need to pull because you're gonna you're gonna use the run out bearing, throw out bearing in the new stack. And then I'm gonna preserve the order of this stack because if I have questions about how to put it back together, I want to know how it came out. Okay, so one thing you're gonna wanna watch out for, there's the stack, my whole stack came out as one. We'll inspect that in a minute. I'm interested to see how much um, wear there is on the plates. But there are these pins, these are called drive pins, and there's a caution in the instructions not to drop these into the engine. I'm really hoping I didn't lose one, so I'm gonna grab these and count them. Um, you wanna make sure you keep track of all of these. So I've got five, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Shit. So we're gonna track that down. All right, next step is you gotta um, unlock the tabs on this retaining nut for the for the basket. I'm also gonna pull the push rod for the clutch. Um, you don't technically need to. Make sure you know which way it came out. So the rounded end is up here by the clutch stack. The end with the hole, um, that sits down inside the engine. Just to get that out of the way. Then we're gonna bend these tabs back off of this nut. Um, and then we're gonna have to use a clutch tool. Yeah, because this turns. We're gonna have to use a clutch tool to hold everything in place while we break that loose. Okay, so the center hub nut is 27 millimeter, uh, just for reference. And a traditional clutch basket tool is not gonna hold anything here because usually those lock onto the splines of the inner hub. That won't work in this case. So we're gonna use one of these generic tools, which I keep having to come back to, even though I really don't like them because it's easy to break parts with these. I've done it a couple of times, uh, really unfortunately. So I'm gonna really gently um, lock this onto the inner hub and then use that as a lever to hold against. And let's pop this nut off. So these are the spots where the pins are gonna sit. So I'm not gonna use those to lock against in case I scuff them. I'm gonna use these, which I think serve no real purpose. Just lock that in there gently. I'm gonna try to put a little more tension on that. And then we should be able to use that to counter hold and break this loose. Looks like they Loctited this. I don't know if that's really necessary. I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm not sure I'll bother. You got this locking ring which uh, I think is gonna stop it going anywhere. Okay, so now I should be able to lift the inner parts of the hub out um, somehow. Yeah. Make sure I'm not dropping anything. Check on the back, yep. There's a big fat washer, there usually is. So we'll make sure we save that. And then let's understand how the inner hub works. Okay, so there's one more. Clutch plate, which we're gonna save on the stack. And then the inner hub. Okay, I see why they do this. So they've got dampers, just like on the drive line on a street bike. This is where they put the clutch dampers. Instead of um, a lot of older clutches um, have dampers over here, have dampers in the back of the basket. Here the basket's got a lot of oil channels, which is great. Um, so they put the rubber dampers in the hub instead. So we'll have to fish those out Carefully and um, those are gonna get reused. So these are pretty easy. You can gently grab them with a pair of pliers Don't scuff them up too much. Note the orientation direction. You also want to check the condition of these um, These seem fine, but they can degrade over time. Um, there's a hundred hours on this bike and it's only uh, Barely a year old I guess at this point. So th these are okay. All right, so now I got to try to find the pin I lost Got it. I was very close to well and truly fucked. I mean, you can always pull the engine and split the cases if you get it out of there. These pins are super easy to lose into the engine. And there is an oil channel at the bottom of the engine that goes into the second half of the casing. Um, I got lucky and it fell in a spot where it, it didn't fall through, but it, it was pure luck. Um, it easily could have, it was close. I got lucky and got it out, but uh, don't fuck yourself like I almost did. Grab your pins. You can pull them out with a screwdriver before you pull the clutch stack and that should be a safer way. Um, maybe take like two or three plates off and then do that. Um, one thing I wanna point out, people gave Beta a lot of shit when they went to a plastic oil gear and here's KTM with the polymer oil gear too. So I, in my opinion, they work fine. I'm not that worried about them. Um, I know that there have been a few reported failures from guys in, on the Beta side of the world, but um, 
I, I never had any problems with mine. In fact, on the beta that I ran, you can watch my video about it. I actually ran clutch pieces, um, broken clutch plate pieces through the engine by mistake. And um, they went through the plastic teeth of that gear, of the, of the oil drive gear, and they nicked them, but they didn't do any more damage to it than to the metal gears. I honestly think it's, a, it's just fine um, that, that KTM and Beta and everybody else is doing that. No problem with it. That's as far as we need to go. So now, oh, and you know what? I should have been doing this whole time is soaking the new clutch plates. So while I install the basket and everything, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and get the new clutch plates soaking in oil. Let's take a look at these friction plates from the original OEM stack. It's 100 hours of relatively hard riding on this stack. Um, I don't see any bluing from like overheating, which is cool. The pads are pretty low, but I don't know. I mean, they're not, they're not worn out. Some of them are, are low, they're thin, depending on where you go in the stack. Obviously they didn't all engage exactly the same. Although I guess with drive force, they would get, they'd get pretty well spread. But yeah, they, they seem even. I don't see any burning or bluing or any real like wear to the whole thing. This probably would have gone I don't know, another 50 hours or something. I don't think this clutch plate or this clutch stack was actually anywhere close to going. So I would say like, I'm doing this cause I want to play around with the, um, the spring weight and all that. But like this OEM clutch stack at hundred hours of hard enduro riding is just fine. I obviously I didn't have any slipping or anything with it. I don't see any indication in these plates that they were like super close to being gone. I'm not sure what the stack height is supposed to be, but they look fine to me. And, and I probably could have run these, I don't know, another 50, hundred hours maybe. Um, without any issues, so that's good to know. Now we need to measure the stack height of the new clutch, the recluse clutch, because stack height determines how much spring tension they recommend you put on. So we're gonna measure, I think you measure it dry. So I'm getting 28 and a half millimeters. Yeah, 28.3, so let's see how that corresponds. There's a, there's a service sheet that comes with the recluse clutch. So if it's greater than 27.9, which yeah, we're 28 and a half, and you say go, to, go with three go with spring rate three. I'm not sure if that's lighter or stiffer. Let's measure the stock stack. Oh, it's substantially lower. Interesting, so the stack height's actually different. Wasn't really expecting that, that's interesting. I also wanted to count the stock plates. So there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight friction plates, it looks like. In the new clutch, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's an extra friction plate. So you don't have double the surface, but you do have much more surface. I mean, you get a whole other plate worth of it. Actually, both sides of another plate. So the way the, the clutch stack works is as you add plates, you're effectively adding surface. It'd be like if you put a bigger, like if like in a car clutch where it's like one disc, it'd be effectively adding surface to that one disc. They just stack it instead. It's the same concept. So we're going to go with setting three. The factory setting was on two, which is 3.9 and change height. Let's go to three is 4.2. So it's like a quarter millimeter ish more preload and the instructions say more preload equals a lighter pull. So I'm going to throw these in a bag, pour some oil in, lay it on its side, move it around a bit. Let that let the um, friction plates, the steel plates don't matter, but the friction plates soak up some oil before I start dropping them in the bike. Doesn't take all that long. I don't know what the recommendation is, but a few minutes should be fine. All right, so first things first, we're gonna drop the dampers into the new Recluse um, hub. Pretty straightforward. They fall right into place, just like you'd expect. And then we're going to throw the inner hub in to those dampers. Nice. So you can see there's, there's like a slot that it can turn in right before metal to metal contact happens. These rubber dampers are what you're, you're hitting on. So when you dump the clutch, um, it, the force is not getting metal to metal contact. It's going into those rubber dampers and then driving. So I guess that's better. I don't know. And then we're going to drop this pack into the basket on the bike. And I noticed that there's a, a few differences here that are worth pointing out now that I look at it. So this is the stock hub. This is quite a bit thicker. There's more going on. There's like these extra divot things outside here, which I don't know, but this one's like the recluse one is simpler. And honestly, I think it's, I think it's lighter. It feels lighter. There's more oil channels in 
The Recluse one, you can see these extra holes. So Recluse does a really good job of adding extra oil flow to the clutch stack, which I really like. I don't think the stock clutch stack really gets enough oil through to the plates. Um, learned that the hard way on the Beta, but this, this doesn't have as much oil channeling as the new one does, so that's cool. The next thing is we're gonna drop the new locking washer and then tighten the, the nut down. You generally wanna put a new locking washer on every time. I've reused them when I didn't care about the bike. Like not for sale or whatever, but like, I don't know, like on my old XR, I wasn't doing anything fancy with that bike. I didn't really care if it, you know, happened to fail and came apart, but I do care about this bike, so I'm, in any way, Recluse includes them, which is nice. So we'll stick that in. I'm gonna do it this way. I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, what does matter is there's a down tab and that's got to sit in one of these two grooves. So you can put it, there's like a couple, there's two spots and a couple, there's two exact spots you can put it. So that's how it goes right there. And we're gonna screw this nut down on it. The nut is not directional. Oh shit, I very nearly fucked up. So pull all this off for a second. Uh, there's actually that washer that I talked about in the beginning that needs to go on the back of the whole thing. See, it sits back here and there's a couple of little tabs to it. Uh, those just go in. So, okay, those just grab. This like can go on here. That's just to center it, right? So that goes there. And that's not something you wanna forget because you'll have the whole stack height will be way wrong. Now we can start to put this back together. I'm glad I stopped to think there. Sometimes when we're doing these videos, you might, um, we try to cut a lot of it out, but you'll see us pause and stutter and whatever, act like idiots. It's because we're thinking through stuff like this and trying not to make these stupid mistakes. And um, we try to, to warn you about them when we catch ourselves. I, I don't see any directionality to this nut. Looks the same to me, so I'm not gonna worry about it. What's going on? I haven't locked down the basket yet or the, the hub because I'm not getting this tight yet. As soon as I get uh, closer to torque, it's gonna start to turn. Yep, there we go. All right, and then we're gonna need to use this locking tool, which again, I'm not at all a fan of because it feels dangerous to me to use this. On this Recluse hub, there aren't any really nice channels to grab like there were on the, um, the other one. All right, that just feels so violent. I've broken these parts before doing this shit, so. Better, I don't think that scratched anything. So you use these rounded pins and put them in literally where the, the drive pins go and that worked perfectly. So that's something you could try. Let's flip this stack over in the, the oil here. Spread the plates a bit. I, I think this is like wet enough. Probably gonna be just fine. Now there's a difference in these. There's one that's a different thickness. And I don't know how to identify it. They also go in a different, they go in a specific orientation. I don't know how to tell them apart. Um, I was hoping they'd be labeled. That'd be nice. 63, recluse steel drive plate first in. Install the 0 0.04 or one millimeter thick drive plate the orientation shown into the basket. All drive plates follow this orientation. Okay, so we literally have to start measuring these. That's annoying. Till we find one that's just one millimeter. So we'll zero our tool out. You put a thin steel plate on top and on bottom. Okay, okay, this all makes sense. So there's a there's two thinner steel plates. One goes on the bottom of the stack, one goes on the top. There's a specific orientation to them. Um, so you gotta look in the diagram in the manual and there's like a directionality to it that it shows you so they need to go like this and we're going to put all these cool pins back in without losing them nice boom now we go for friction discs one thing is you want to make sure they get dropped into the right place notice how there's like a, a, a dip or there's like a U shape here, an arch. If you drop the plates in on that side, they won't make contact properly. They've got to go in the, in the slots that go all the way down, if that makes sense. And then you start alternating, making sure you get the order or the orientation right on all these. We're gonna drop the release rod in. So I'm gonna install the throw out bearing into the recluse cover. Doesn't install in. Okay, well, we're gonna set it. Oh, I gotta bend up the tabs of the locking washer. Keep trying to forget things. That's cool. 
Okay, set the throw out bearing on the release pin. I'm gonna set the, okay, this, they say orient. I don't know what they mean. And that's where that goes. And we're gonna go on step three of this thing. So it was on step two, which is interesting, but we're gonna go on step three. And then they say to use the, um, the recluse spring or screws, or you'll have the stock screws will hit the clutch cover. Okay. That's a clutch stack. Let's swap the oil fill cap to the new one. Drop that into place. Put the spring for the brake lever back in. Now we can put the cap on. Oh, you know what? This doesn't fit very well over the recluse cover. Ah, did not think about that. The Acherby's cover does not fit on the recluse because of the profile of this. I mean, this is all covered by the skid plate. This is where I really want protection. I could cut it, but I'm gonna leave it off for now. Think of something later. All right, so that's installed. Uh, I'm gonna stand the bike in, pour some oil in, take it outside and start it, I guess. And um, it's dark now, so I'm gonna make sure it works. And then tomorrow I'm gonna take it out. We're gonna do some riding. We've, we've got a trip planned and I will film on the trail first impressions of um, what to expect from this. And there you have it, Recluse installed and running on the bike. We're gonna do probably a deeper review of the whole clutch setup, clutch performance, clutch lever pull and stuff like that as we get a little bit further um, into this bike. We're at 100 hours now. I think the next thing is we're gonna do a video of, of we're gonna call it maintenance abuse or something like that. So like and subscribe, we've got that coming up. We've got podcasts coming out. Um, we've got more helmet mounts coming out. So check out all that stuff. Check out our website. Check out our Instagram page where you can see a lot of the clips, action clips of us riding. Um, which honestly isn't all that interesting, but it's a good time. We have fun. Um, a lot of the guys that we ride with are actually interesting, um, us excluded. And um, you can also see the first person footage that comes off of the chin mounts that we run for, or that we make for GoPros and other action cameras. So check all that out. Um, like and subscribe. We appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.